Thanks, Rakesh. Um, <clears throat> and I'm probably going to wish I would have spent more time actually attending these than actually before I delivered, but this is all part of the, the process. So, um, so I'm going to really go by the seat of my pants here and I'm going to decide whether I'm going to be able to, can I share screen if I need to? Is, yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, what I would like to do, so I'm, I'm really keen to talk about um, permaculture and mental health in a really big way, actually. So um, for those of you that have know about permaculture, that's fantastic. For those of you that perhaps don't or want to know a bit more, um, I'd like to share a bit of a presentation from something that I already do as a permaculture teacher. But I'm also approaching this from somebody who suffers from poor mental health um, and has done since I was a teenager. So I'm really keen to sort of stop the stigma here and hopefully share with you some tools and techniques um, that you can perhaps use yourself or share with any friends or family members. Um, so if I go over time, please, um, please let me know. I will hopefully, hopefully not so. I will now go in to share my screen. Okay. Um, okay. I'm waiting for this little bit at the top to disappear which doesn't seem it's going to. Okay. Right, so for some reason I can't, uh, this little bit at the top here won't disappear. So I'm just gonna have to go through the slides as they are. Okay, so really what I'd like to talk about, what is resilience um, when we're thinking about dealing with uh, adversity? Um, from a mental health perspective, or I guess just in any challenges um, that we have. And I think resilience comes in so many different ways. And I was speaking to a friend the other day and they said they didn't even know that what they actually did was resilience. Um, so I think resilience can come in so many different ways. Um, so there's a guy that, um, I really, really like him and respect his name is Chris Johnson. And he has a book called Seven Ways to Think Differently. And what he describes resilience as an object or material which is resilient when it springs back into shape after being stretched or squashed. How many times do you feel like you've actually been pulled and squished and um, not able to overcome some kind of adversity? And I often find myself going through so many different challenges, especially right now at this moment, even being on this, this course here, I um, uh, this, this, this session with you guys, I'm really actually practicing all these, these techniques and thought processes right now. And I think being able to bounce back from adversity or all the challenge, the things that we face and coping with shocks, adapting to the changes around us. So using, um, permaculture in a way so taking some of the principles um, that can be used with within the permaculture design framework so creatively use and respond to change when you feel like you're over trying to overcome something I suppose and that can be really hard when you're in that moment in that in that frame of thinking where you really don't know how to find a way forward where you really don't know how to overcome the challenge that you're actually facing um, so what I would like to invite you to do, I don't know, I'm hoping we have sort of time to do this, is maybe if you feel you would like to and if you feel open to doing it, is to share um, what personal resilience actually means to you. And if there's a story that perhaps you can share just for a minute, minute or two, uh, but let's just say a minute each, um, about how you use resilience to overcome adversity in your life, whatever challenge that might be. And it can be really basic and really simple. Um, but what is resilience to you? And what, what, would you, what have you experienced within your own life that you've overcome? And anybody can start, I really don't mind. 
I can stop sharing the screen while I do this so we can actually see each other. If nobody wants to share, that's absolutely fine too. Rakesh. Yeah, I guess um, I grew up in Dagenham, East London, really rough place. Um, barely, I mean, I, I'm dyslexic. I struggled to read and write and I had no interest in school whatsoever. So I failed pretty much every single exam intentionally. I mean, I put no effort whatsoever into school. And I was continuously just labelled as being stupid and dumb and worthless and all the rest of it. And um, the way I saw it in life is, yeah, it stressed me out all for a while. But then um, the way I saw it is, you know, if I try and do something, if I find something that I really want to do, um, I have no fear of doing it because let's face it, everyone knows I'm stupid, dumb, can't do anything. So I've got nothing to lose. If I do it and I fail, everyone knows I'm stupid. So no problem. Um, if I succeed, good for me. And what I found is whatever I tried, whatever I had a real passion for, I was just good at it. If I put effort and energy into it, I was just good. And uh, I could do whatever I wanted, you know, practically. I may not be able to uh, write things down and express it so easily in written. I may not be able to digest things in written form, but that doesn't mean I'm stupid. And, um, and so that was turning that, you know, continuous, like, you know, decade of continuously being told I was dumb and stupid for me, turned it into a positive to, cause I, you know, through my own hard work, and effort, I found out that actually I was pretty good at things. Thanks, Rakesh, for sharing that. That is an absolutely fantastic story and definitely one of resilience. So, and you're a great example of how we can actually overcome adversity. Would anybody else like to follow on from Rakesh? Mm, I can also share something. Thank you, Sophie. Um, yeah, it's interesting The kind of maybe format is like similar in some ways to Rakesh's, even though the content is different. So when I was 15, I was diagnosed with um, a chronic autoimmune disease. And then after that, I was diagnosed with another one. And again, I was told that like, basically nothing would come of me. Uh, I'd be lucky if I spent more time out of hospital than in hospital and that the quality of my life would be seriously impacted um, and that I would have to take a lot of medicine and it would be really restricted what I could do with my life. Um, and yeah, I think the point of resilience was to look inside of myself, to get support from different people and to realize I didn't need to take that kind of medical um, perspective on face value. Um, and yeah, it gave me a lot of determination really to prove them wrong. I spent a lot of time like working mentally, working on my health, like looking at what I ate, looking at my thought patterns. And yeah, now I have a really active life. I reached Bulgaria on a bicycle. I spent years like cycling, hiking. Um, I'm in the garden almost every day working and yeah, I have some like signs of these conditions. Sometimes it's worse than at other times. But I think I've managed to make a really good quality of life for myself and yeah, be able to support and like help other people as well on their journey. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you very much for sharing your story. Would anybody else like to share? Belinda, thank you. Um, well, I think I came from a dysfunctional family. I didn't realise it was really, but um, it wasn't very supportive. And um, my method of, of uh, resilience was to remove myself from that, although I did keep in touch. And um, at later date, I was actually, I did end up in hospital a couple of times, um, but I... I just knew that I, I was under 
um, stress and start began to realize that it wasn't it wasn't all me, you know these these the way people um, the way people uh, behaved and how I, that I just needed more support. I wasn't getting support. And I, it, it gave, it did give me, I did have to become very independent and um, resourceful. And I moved away from home and, you know, I, I, I eventually sort of sorted things out more or less with my parents, both dead now. Um, but I've just continued. And I've always felt that the that, that, that diagnosis, when you're labeled, it's just, uh, and I, I you know, I, I didn't want, to, I, I maybe didn't follow the rules. I pretended I was taking the medicines. I, I used herbs and um, I, I just thought this is, I do not want to be part of this system. And um, yeah, you know, I feel I'm pretty successful now and uh, enjoying life anyway. Thank you, Belinda. Thank you so much for sharing your heart. And uh, thank you for Sophie for the prompting time. Thank you. Uh, Colis. Yeah, Christina. <laughs> it's me. Oh, 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 sorry. I do beg your pardon, pronunciation. Uh, so I wanted to speak about, you know, something like on a smaller scale, which can also happen like every day. It's like in, you know, in everyday the interactions, sometimes, you know, you might get into difficult, you know, conversations and stuff or like that, and you can get easily hurt. And for me, uh, resilience is means um, how much, how how fast can I get into my, you know, to be to be well and to be, you know, to let's say forgive or to, you know, give get to a bigger understanding and how how quickly can I, you know, rearrange my mandala and be, <laughs> uh, you know. Have confidence in me and be really okay. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, Katrina. Thank you. And anybody else like to share? We'll just do one more. If not, that's okay. Um, I, okay, uh, Alexandra. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Um, yeah. Um... I think resilience for me, it um, as a like a short term, shorter than other problems <laughs> that I could use it in was, um, you know, when I was at 13, I started um, having a disordered thinking towards food. And it lasted until I was about 17. Yeah, my family was per a particularly big reason why it, um, it got developed and why it lasted so long because they were encouraging it and uh, through veganism i i yeah i started uh finding out more about the princi principles and the ethical side of veganism and then i got into the nutrition side of it and i could explain certain myths or certain yeah things that my family were telling me about food that were just untrue. So I could, uh, even though with a very, a very um, damaged metabolism, I could start healing it and I could start, uh, yeah, going back to, yeah, bouncing back, I guess, from the five year period where it was pretty bad. So that's, who, that's what I kind of associate with resilience the most because it's been the most successful in that subject. Yeah, this is Ruxar. Hi, another I'm Ruxar. Volunteer. I'm other team member, let's say. Um, and uh, with me also, I have some certain autoimmune diseases, thyroid. So I read that it's holistically, it's happening because you keep so much negativity in your side and uh, I think it's about life and the, also the family, how to deal with the uh, problems instead of solutions sometimes. I think it affects me. And I am nowadays getting holistically diet at the moment, gluten-free, that kind of stuff. 
and uh, I feel much better and much more energy. So, uh, yeah, and I feel blessed to be here also with all kind of people in Balkev, with Sophie Ragura, with mm -hmm. our mentor. And um, um, so we are keep learning. So, yeah, this is how it is resilience at the moment here. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, absolutely amazing stories of resilience. And can I just say, um, well done, well done for um, actually going through that stage of using that resilience and growing. And I think this is what it's about. When we step forward, when we step up and we face the adversities that we um, that we face that actually approach us, um, I think we do grow. And I think we um learn from those opportunities although they might not be considered opportunities at the time um, and i know that what i have faced so I'll, I'll just touch base with you guys a little bit about my story um, i'm not going to go too deep into it but um i come from a background of a dysfunctional family uh, violence was involved and then um, I ended up experiencing that kind of situation as an adult as well um, and then discovering I was an HSP which is a highly sensitive person or sensory processing sensitivity and it explained a lot for me and how I couldn't cope with a lot of the challenges that I faced um, within society and life but um, before I kind of discovered that that latter part um, that I've just um, said to you um, I discovered permaculture. So all the way through um, learning about permaculture as um, from my uh, local transition group that I was part of. Um, and then I took a PDC and it kind of evolved from there. And then I've gone on to run courses and just learn even more about permaculture. There's still lots and lots I don't know. But I found that actually um, helping people learn about the design process um, and how we can use it as a way to face different um, challenges that we actually meet, no matter how big or small they are. Um, I found it to be so useful in um, doing it for myself, but also teaching it to people. So using different tools and techniques. Um, and some of those are tools and techniques that I've used um, simple things like reading, walking, um, especially concentrating on the ethics of permaculture. So, um, for example, the, the first ethic is, is about taking um, care of the earth. But I guess what's more important here is looking at the people care aspect of it. So, And that includes ourselves, definitely. And I think we forget that. We actually forget to take care of ourselves. Um, so looking at the, the inner zone zero, zero, so the inner landscape of that. Um, and I think I've got about five minutes left. Is that right, Sophie? Yeah, about five minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I want to do, so the, I want to go back to the presentation that I was doing, but I'm going to skip through some slides because I just want to, um, I want you to glimpse at just a few of the tools and techniques um, which I've, I've actually um, discovered and used myself. So um, excuse the very crudeness of my <laughs> presentation here. So um, yeah, so these are just some of the tools and techniques. So looking at the permaculture ethics and using some of those principles. So the first one um, I in, introduced to was creatively responding to change. And that can be really hard when you're going through a process of how do you think quickly? How do you reframe your thinking? But I think once you understand how to use permaculture and introduce those tools and techniques, it can be a really useful tool. So thinking abundantly about what we have around us that can actually, um, I guess we can be grateful for. And sometimes that can actually help us um, overcome adversity as well. And a technique I like to use is visioning. Um, and that really has been inspired from looking at the um, design web. And for those who, who, who may not understand that, but the design web um, is a social permaculture framework um, designed by Luby McNamara. Um, and you look at visioning and I imagine myself in a place of, of abundance and overcoming the adversity that I'm actually facing, doing things like, um, just free drawing so that's you're writing things uh, not not writing things down basically getting a piece of paper scribbling it not even thinking about what i'm drawing it's really cathartic and looking at different things like um the five ways to well-being 
um, st and storyboarding techniques and my own personal toolkit. Um, and using those actual permaculture processes, so going through like a wants and needs kind of analysis, um, SWOCs, um, PACE, all these different processes that are within um, perma the permaculture framework might not seem that you could potentially use them to help you overcome adversity, you know, with, the, with poor mental health but actually they're actually really useful even being able to talk to people so if you have challenges within your family or personal relationship there are just simple techniques that we can use um so one of them which is really important which you may have heard of is non-violent communication so how can we effectively communicate with people to um help them understand what our needs are uh, and that can be really difficult sometimes when we're in a place uh, where we can't express our needs because we just might be struggling, we need to get out of the environment we in, um, we're in. Uh, yeah, and that can actually be um, really difficult. So I'm just going to skip um, down to, uh, I want to go to the design web. Yes, so um, for those of you who don't know about, so this is a design web. Um, and it's, a, it's 12 anchor points that help you go through a process um, from visioning all the way through to going through to the poor stage. And you can break them down and they can help you shift forward to a desired outcome. Uh, and this is just an example of how I've taken the zone zero zero. So that's from the, um, from the zoning aspect within permaculture and use the design web just to go through um, different aspects to get me to a particular goal or vision that I actually wanted. Um, so I won't go through to the storyboarding bit now. Um, we won't really sort of have time for that. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. As I said, I wish I'd actually probably taken one of these um, sessions before. Um, but what I would like to do is just ask people if there's one particular tool or technique that you use that you find really helpful. And if so, why? Yes, Alexandra. Yes, um, you can call me Rusa also. Um, I am using Tai Chi because uh, Chi Chi energy is kind of uh, you know uh, living energy, and um, in the Tai Chi also you are you are accepting everybody like mirror, like puzzle with everybody, and you keep learning from them and you discover by you or by someone else, something related with you and your, um, yeah. So in this way, also Tai Chi is kind of exercise, um, but very slow down and turning in yourself. Mm -hmm. So I'm using that. Uh, could I add something? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, please do. Um, I don't um, like. I like to use different techniques and different practices, but I think the most uh, general kind of rule that I like to implement in any situation that I ha uh, that I am in is uh, self acceptance, and which means for me that. I don't need to do or say or think anything to be worth something. Uh, in certain situations, it's very hard to apply, but as a rule or as a mantra or as something that I like to repeat to myself right, while trying to get myself out of certain positions is just uh, existing is good enough, I think. Yeah, just being is good enough. And that gets me out of a lot of <laughs> very occasionally dark places. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you very much for sharing. I do believe my time is up now. Um, it is up. Thank you so much, Wendelin, for your presentation. Um, we do have a 10 minute break now. So um, yeah, we don't need to hurry to the next person. But yeah, I'd like to invite you if you have time and desire another month to come back 
if you'd like to go into more detail of any of these tools that you mentioned, because yeah, it was a really nice overview, but there's like, you have really, yeah, like worked very well at like developing those tools and mapping them onto mental health. So I feel it'd be like really useful and interesting to discuss it further if you, if you would be up to doing that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm very, very keen to um, promote um, both the permaculture and mental health together and share these techniques. I think it's important. So, yeah, would absolutely love to come back next month and do this. Um, and I have to go. Uh, so thank you for allowing me to come to this session and for getting me in the beginning. And thank you, Rakesh, for just having these moments and these sessions here. Really appreciate it. And lovely for everybody to share everything. So thank you very, very much. And thank you, Sophie. Yeah, you're very welcome. We'll look forward to yeah, seeing you next time. That was a really beautiful session. Thank you so much for sharing. Bye bye, take care. Okay, so we now have um, a short break. So we'll come back at uh, 10 to after the break. So yeah, you're welcome to stay and chat if you want to. You're welcome to take a break. But we'll come back in about seven minutes at 10 to. So Rakesh, you got the uh, registration from um, uh, from Steve. You send him a message.